Hello everybody, this is 8-Bit Flashback, and a couple months ago I did a review for this case. This is the Kuma 9000 Super Nintendo case for the Raspberry Pi 3, made by Kentaro. And this is a very cool little case. It's got a functional power button, a reset button, an LED light, and just a lot of great detail. The quality and the craftsmanship on this case is great, and I figured it'd be very hard for them to make another case that impresses me as much as this one. But luckily for me, I was wrong. Because now, they have released the Ursus Super Nintendo PAL case for the Raspberry Pi 3, and this is an awesome little case. So, let's check this guy out. So if you're looking to get one of these, they are taking pre-orders on their website right now, and I'll make sure to post a link down below. And there's a couple different options you can choose from, you can get the Raspberry Pi 3B for $25 bucks, or you can get the B Plus model for $27. Bucks. And eventually this will be available on Amazon and I'll make sure to post a link as soon as that happens. So I collect and build a lot of different miniature consoles. I even 3D print some. But this is one of the few cases I didn't have in my collection. So I was really happy that Kentaro made one of these because I've been looking for one for a while. So here's a look at the box that comes in. And inside of course we've got our Pi 3 case the Ursus Super Nintendo PAL case, some instructions, a heat sink, and the heat sink might vary depending on what model you get. For the Raspberry Pi 3B, you're going to get this heat sink right here, and for the B Plus, it's going to be a slightly different heat sink. Also on the box, we have a screwdriver and some screws to attach everything, and some heat sink paste. And here's an up close look at the case, and it's got a lot of great detail. It's got a functional power button and a reset button. And there's just so much detail in this case. Those controller ports look good. On the side here is going to be where our USB ports are and our Ethernet port. On the back we have our AV jack, HDMI output, and our power input. And on this side it's going to be our micro SD card access. And on the bottom you have quite a bit of detail too. We have this fake extension port that would have been on the original one. And the colors on this case look really good. And for size comparison, here it is next to the Kuma 9000 Super Nintendo case made by Kentaro. Here it is next to the official Super Nintendo Classic Edition case. And on this case, I've done a cartridge mod. And here it is next to the official Nintendo Classic Edition. And I've also done a cartridge mod on this one. And that might be something I'll do in the future with this one is do a cartridge mod. This one with working cartridges would be a really cool case. So to assemble the case, you're going to need a Raspberry Pi 3B or a B plus. You're also going to need a power supply, preferably a 5 volt, pushing at least 2 amps. Also, you need some sort of controller like this USB Super Nintendo controller. And a USB keyboard would be very helpful too. So we'll start by taking this case apart. And there's no screws in it right now, so it's going to come right apart. And what you want to do is tilt the back up first, and then it'll come right apart. And on the top of the case here, we have the circuit board for the power buttons in the LED light. And we also have an optional fan mount right here. And then right here it's going to directly plug into the Raspberry Pi 3 board at this connection right here. Then on the bottom of the case we have a mount here for a fan if we want to add one. And one really cool feature about this case is we do have the option now to add some USB ports if we choose. There is a little bit of modifying involved but it is possible. On the front here these snap out. They just unclip from the inside. So if you have some modding skills, you'll be able to add a USB port right here. Uh, but we do have limited room inside the case, so if you're trying to add a USB cable, you might have to solder to the bottom of the Pi 3 board in order for the cable to fit. And maybe later on in a future video, I can show you how to do that. Now it's time to set the Raspberry Pi 3 inside the case, and it can only go in one direction. Our USB ports are going to go on this side, and the HDMI is going to go towards the back. So when it's in there correctly, all our ports should line up just right. Now if you're going to use the heat sink, there is some heat sink paste. And all you want to do is just use a small dot of this stuff. You don't need much. Just make a small dot on each one of these chips right here. Now we're going to go ahead and put that heat sink in place. So it should come with eight screws. we got four smaller screws and four bigger screws. And those four bigger screws are going to go in each corner of this heat sink. And that's going to secure the Raspberry Pi 3 board to the case also. So there's an up close look at the four screws. Now it's time to put the top of the case on. 
and this connection right here is going to plug into the Raspberry Pi 3 right here. And as you're putting the top on it needs to be just at a slight angle. And as you're pushing the top down it should go nice and easy. If you're in a bind don't keep pressing because you might bend those pins. Go ahead and realign and adjust till it pushes down easy. That way you don't cause any damage to that Pi 3. Now we have four smaller screws left and those are going to go on the bottom of the case located here. So now it's time to install my micro SD card and I already have RetroPie 4.4 pre-installed for an operating system. So if you're looking for a RetroPie image you can visit the RetroPie website and I'll make sure to leave links down below for all these websites. You can also visit Kentaro's guide and on this site they have a RetroPie image that's already pre-configured. So if you're a beginner I would definitely recommend using this one because this has all that software already pre-installed for the power and reset button and it's ready to go. The only thing you have to do is add games. But if you want to use your own RetroPie image, you're going to have to access the RetroPie terminal and enter these commands right here. And this will install the necessary software to make your power, reset button, and LED light functional. For myself, I like to access the RetroPie terminal on my PC with a program called PuTTY. And for PuTTY to work, you're going to have to enable the SSH on your RetroPie, and that's going to be in the Raspberry Config settings. And I also have to be connected to Wi-Fi. Then I just use my RetroPie IP address to get logged into PuTTY. Then my username is pi and password is raspberry. So for me, it's just much easier to do it this way. I don't have to type any commands. I can just copy and paste when I'm on my computer. If you want to access the RetroPie terminal on your console, just push F4 on your keyboard and that'll take you to the same screen. And then from there, you enter these two commands. You enter this top one first and that'll take about five to 10 minutes. After that's done, you'll enter that bottom command. Then it's going to reboot the console and then your power button and reset button should be functional. And here's an example if you want to access the RetroPie terminal from your console. Just hook up a USB keyboard and then push F4 and that'll take you to the RetroPie terminal where you can enter those commands. So I'm going to push F4 and that'll take me right to the RetroPie terminal. Okay, I get everything set up now. So when I hit the power button, it should power up and this LED light should come on momentarily. And we're going to be greeted by a new splash screen. It's going to be a Kentaro splash screen. And I'll show you how to disable that here in just a few if you don't want to use that. And you can see the LED light is now on. I'll turn off the light real fast so you can see that. So now both of these buttons are functional. If we push reset, it's going to reboot the system and take us back to this screen. Then if we hit the power button, it's going to start that soft shutdown and then power the unit off. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Now we'll go ahead and power it back up. Now if you want to disable that Kentaro splash screen, all you have to do is hold the reset button for 5 seconds. Then this red light will start blinking. So it should blink 10 times after holding that reset button for 5 seconds. And that indicates that that splash screen will be disabled. So let's go ahead and reset it and that splash screen should now be gone. So now we just have the standard splash screen, just the RetroPie logo. Then it should boot up Emulation Station. All right, I got everything installed and everything's working just like it should. And if you're looking for a cool theme for Emulation Station, check this one out. This is the Retro Hursty 69 Sterling. And I really like this theme. It's got a lot of clean images. And this might be my new favorite theme for Emulation Station. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. If you liked that video, please click that like button. If you want to hear more from me, please subscribe. And if you want to help support the channel, you can now find me on Facebook and Patreon. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time.